going on guys today we're going to cover something pretty interesting from the rise of skywalker novelization this is a scene that i think would have although unnecessary for the film and you know just would have made the film so much longer but i feel like it just would have been pretty cool to see uh this is a scene on mustafar and if you didn't know that very beginning shot of the planet and where kylo is on i think it was maybe like a 30 second scene at most where Kylo is taking out some of those people with his lightsaber and then you know gets the wayfinder that's actually on Mustafar and the remnants around him uh, are Vader's castle now the book goes into much greater detail regarding that scene and it gives you almost like a, a witcher kind of feel it gives you this mysticism in there which ties into Vader and what he left for whoever would find the wayfinder it's really cool it's this might be a longer video it's about two three pages and um i'm excited to get oh but before i forget you guys ordered like sold out on these babies so i'm going to be making the hats so um stay tuned for that all right now that, that shameless plug is out of the way let's get started okay so we're starting um and by the way on that scene i should also mention there are a few pages where general pride and hux are watching from safety and they're just kind of enamored with how Kylo Ren moves and they're just talking about how he's just like just this beautiful creature that's just like just killing everyone and uh it was just pretty cool how they describe how he moves with his cape billowing and all that stuff and the glowing lava around him um so let's get to it Kylo Ren showed mercy to nothing and no one but he had a grudging appreciation for things that struggle to survive even though the nearest lava flow was many clicks away, it seemed as though the air ought to be too hot, too chemical, for life to truly thrive there. As they'd landed, Hux had proclaimed the planet a desolate hellscape, and Kylo hadn't bothered to correct him. The truth was, Mustafar was teeming with life, all connected through the Force. Like those helpless cultists he'd just killed, who'd been obsessed with protecting Vader's legacy. So this is a little confusing to me, because... In the visual guide, it says, unless I'm mistaken, which I very well might be, those people that he killed were miners that were coming to Mustafar and mining the planet. But now it says that the people he killed were those that were cultists that were just protecting Vader's legacy, which actually makes much more sense. So I probably misread that part. Anyways, so now we know that who, who they were. Or this forest of twisted iron trees they endeavored to cultivate. Ah, see, so it might have been indeed, okay? They might have been miners. Or even the extremophile organisms that swarm the lava flows, all fragile but determined, mutilated but indomitable. It was no wonder his grandfather had chosen this place for a home. Kylo strode through the trees, lightsaber still ignited. Malevolence lay ahead, along with a darkness that had nothing to do with the planet's day-night cycle. But that's not why he kept his weapon ready. He refused to put it away because for the briefest moment, as he was hacking away at Mustafarians, he had sensed her, watching him. Now his guard was up, and it would stay up until he got what he came for. By silent mutual agreement, the stormtroopers who'd accompanied him had declined to follow him through the woods, which suited him fine. He preferred to be alone for this. A few more steps and the ground became soggy. The mist thickened. A small splash indicated that his presence had been noticed. Finally, the trees broke open into a small lake with brackish water, bordered on all sides by forest and large black lumps like boulders, jutting out of the ground at odd angles. No, not boulders, he noted upon closer look, but rather fallen remnants of Darth Vader's castle. An oily film slicked across the lake's still surface, but as Kylo approached, the water bubbled up in the center, sending tiny waves to lap at his boots. A giant emerged, a hairless creature sheening with wetness, bits of lake detritus clinging to its pasty skin. Its eyes were squeezed shut, but it could still see after a fashion, because draped over its massive bald head and across one shoulder was a second creature with long spidery tentacles. It sounds like a disgusting creature, man. It's freaky. The two were locked in symbiosis. Kylo sensed the giant's pain, as though it were a slave to the spidery being that clung to it, yet neither could, yet neither could it survive alone. The spider creature spoke, I am the eye of Webbish Bog. I know what you seek. You will give it to me, Kylo said, 
The eye cocked its head, making an eerie squealing noise. It took a moment for Kylo to realize the creature was laughing at him. No need for that, the eye said. Do you really think my lord would have left it in the guardianship of one who could be swayed by a trick of the force? No, he supposed not. You've been seeking for it for a while, yes? I must warn you, our fiery planet burns in a way deception. If you proceed down this path, you will encounter your true self. Kylo was growing impatient. He glared in silence. Fine, said the creature, as though disappointed that Kylo would not indulge him in ceremony. In accordance with Lord Vader's wishes, you have defeated my protectors and earned it, his wayfinder. The blind giant beneath the eye raised its enormous hand from the water and pointed toward a small island in the lake. On it was a stone structure like an altar. Kylo turned off his lightsaber and hooked it to his belt. He wadded into the shallow lake, soaking his boots and cloak. The water was warm, and the ground beneath the water was sludge that sucked at his feet. He ignored it all. Reaching for a pyramidal object, it fit satisfyingly in his hand, heavy and hot, and he stared at it a moment, lost in its red glow. The sides were etched glass framed in deep gray resin. The crimson light within seemed to pulse faintly. Ren had come a long way for this, and yet he hesitated, eyeing the pyramid with distrust. It will guide you through the unknown regions, the eye said, to the hidden world of Exegol, to him. Whoever he was, the transmission perpetrating to be from Palpatine had reached the far corners of the galaxy. Kylo had it memorized. At last, the work of generations is complete. The great error is corrected. The day of victory is at hand. The day of revenge. The day of the Sith. He wasn't sure what to believe about it, but it was a fair guess that Kylo wasn't the only one seeking answers. Others would follow the same path and come to Mustafar sooner or later, looking for this exact object. So surely his grandfather would have made it harder than this. Those cultists were too easy to kill, this creature too easy to convince. Then again, he was Vader's heir. The object belonged to him. Now that he had it up close, the etchings in the glass clarified into patterns. Star charts, alignment markers, something stirred deep within him, suggesting ancient knowledge and power, and he felt a rush of triumph. It had all been worth it. Diverting ships, sending out spies, tracing old records, enduring the smug disapproval of that idiot Hux, all to find this. Kylo looked up and was startled to discover that the eye of Webbish Bog was gone, slipped back beneath the surface of a lake so still it was as though nothing lived within it at all. So at this point, Kylo just uh, gets into, he's almost transfixed with the, with the pyramid, with the wayfinder. Um, and he doesn't realize how long he's been standing there. So he actually just gets into his tie and gets out of there and then goes to Exegol. And it's pretty interesting, uh, the different things that we get from his interaction with Palpatine as well. Um, there are a bit more moments in there, and it almost seems like when Palpatine raises his hand and all the, the, the Star Destroyers rise from the ice or from the ground, um, it's like, Kylo's in a vision and it's like a flash and Kylo's actually outside watching all of this so that, I thought that was pretty interesting as well um, and the beginning where Rey is meditating that was actually the beginning of this book so we didn't have the, the beginning of Mustafar uh, which we've got in the movie this book started with Rey meditating and there was a lot more dialogue with Leia Leia was basically saying, um, control your thoughts, you know, uh, uh, clear your mind, and then the Jedi of past will be able to speak to you. So that whole part where she's like, be with me, be with me, be with me, is actually a little bit after this dialogue bit that was in the book. And uh, she's j just trying to commune with all of them. So she's trying to commune with, I guess, every single Jedi. And uh, she's trying to talk to Luke and all that, but, you know, it's unsuccessful until the very end of the film where all hope is lost and then all the Jedi come and speak to her. And it even says in the very end of the book that um, Palpatine had wanted to use her as a vessel 
but she was a Jedi and she allowed the Jedi to use her as a conduit. So really her, I, I feel like they could have done maybe a bit of a better job at showing this in the film, you know, by having ghosts and stuff, but perhaps that would have taken away from the overall um, feeling between Rey and Palpatine, just those two. I think it would have been cool, but um, it does explicitly say that they used her as a conduit. So really it was the Jedi just doing what Palpatine did with his clone body, um, transferring his essence. They did the same thing in a, a Jedi way, you know, from the dead kind of. So it's interesting how they kind of do that um, in tandem in the, the light and dark way. So that's it. I, I really wish that we got this bit in the movie. I think it would have been really cool. It's kind of like a, a video game almost, you know. Uh, he, he sees this eyeish bot, webbish bot, whatever the, the name of that creature was, this disgusting looking, horrifying creature. And then the creature points to the, the, the wayfinder. And it's just, it's very mystic. It's very cool. It's very legendsy, And I like that. It's, it's pretty sweet. Goes into this lake that's all like just slick black. It, it was sweet. I liked that a lot. Um, yeah, of, of course, you know, there are things in the book where they can add a lot more. Uh, than the actual movie. Of course, you don't have to worry about VFX or anything because your brain creates it, right? Your, your brain imagines it all up as you're reading the page. But still, that being said, I think it would have been cool. I also want to make sure there are no uh, bits in here that I've left out regarding Anakin because I really wish we did get a little more Anakin in the movie. Um, a little more. I wish we got some Anakin in the movie besides, you know, his couple lines. And... Yeah, there's also a scene, I'm trying to think now, that I mentioned it before, that Rey is sensing something, someone next to Luke, I believe, but she doesn't know who it is. So I'm guessing that could maybe be Anakin, but it, it never says, it's it's just, it doesn't even allude, it's just like, but she sensed someone else there too. Anyways, I'm going to crack more into the book, uh, read it again, and see what stuff I can find for you guys, we can talk about. All right, let me know what you think of this scene. I wish it was in there. Uh, I would love to maybe like go back and, and maybe make an animation of this scene. I think that would be pretty sweet. All right, have an awesome rest of your day. Throw a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always. See you guys.